Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. I am Richard. Today I'm gonna turn you into a hamster and make you jump around on these cute little lily pads here to collect these beautiful little flowers. Because I'm going to show you Hamsters vs Hippos. This is a game from Tin Robot Games. It's from 1 to 6 players, about 15 to 30 minutes of gameplay. And it's about you portraying as this cute little hamster here that have fleed from the zoo. And you are going to jump around on these lily pads trying to collect the flowers. But this is a push your luck kind of game. So you need to know when to quit, otherwise the hippo might eat you. I'm going to show you an overview of this game. I'm going to go through some of the rules and let's just take a look at it. Before we do the setup, we need to figure out who will be the first player. To do this, we need to mix up some tiles on the table. When we have mixed them really good, each player needs to draw one tile. The player that gets the hippo is the first player. So this is the setup of the game. We have a grid that is 5 by 5, but this is a 3 player game. If we would have been a 5 or 6 player game, we would have 7 by 7. Before we mix up these lily pads and put them in this pattern, we need to remove two hippos from these tiles and put them aside for now. Then each player gets their little player card to show which color their little hamster meeple has. Then they pick up the little hamster that corresponds with their player color. The flowers are put in this neat little bowl by the side. Now we need to put some flowers on some of the lily pads on these tiles. Depending again on how big grid you have, the pattern will look differently. But for up to four players, this is the pattern. So, so this game plays out during four different rounds. And during your turn, you can choose to move. You can choose to move one or two steps. Like I said, this is a push your luck kind of game. So you could move one step, pick up a lotus flower, twist a tile, and hopefully you get to keep that lotus. Because if you land on a hippo, they're going to take you and they're going to take your flowers as well. But me, for example, I would like to move one step and flip a tile around. So I flip this around and then I take a look. I was quite lucky. On this one there is one lotus, which means that I get to take one lotus from the supply. So now I have a choice. I can either choose to jump off this lotus flower and jump back to make sure that this flower is safe and I actually have a point, or I could choose to move another step. Now I can move any way I would like to move, and because I am a push your luck kind of guy, I would like to move one more step. So I move to the tile over here. On this one there's already a little flower, so I pick this one up immediately. And then I turn the tile. Well would you look at that, I got the hippo. Which means that my little feller here goes back in front of me and all my collected points are lost. If you end up on the hippo on your first turn like I just did, don't be too sad. I mean, you lose your little flower here, but you at least get three bonus points. So my round ended pretty damn quick. But what happens to the other players if they had been out on lily pads? Well, Nothing really, they get to play on. I'm done for this round, but these two players get to go on and twist around tiles. But if they reveal the second hippo, this round is completely over. Depending on which tile you turn around, different things can happen. This one gave me one flower, for example. This one with two flowers gives you, well, two flowers. This big beautiful one over here gives you three flowers. But there's a lot of other things that might happen as well. This one, for example, means that on your next turn, you need to jump two lily pads away in either direction. Or this one, for example, will let you move 
a flower from one lily pad to another. And this one will let you steal a flower from one of your opponents. You might also end up on the drop tile, which forces you to remove one of your flowers. Or you might end up on this one, which will let you peek under another tile. And the last one we have is Splash. Besides the hippos, this is the one that can end your turn immediately. A round can end in two different ways. Either if any player reveals the second hippo. If this happens, all players end their round simultaneously. Because, well, we all get eaten, and then we lose all the scores that we have attained so far. Now that's a bad one. But if we feel like we do not want to push our luck anymore and all players jump back and feel like their round is over, we make sure that we secure the little flowers that we have managed to get so far by putting them in our little safe zone here. And after that, we get ready for a new round. So now that this round is over, we need to start a new one. The way we do this is that we remove any flowers still out on the playing area and put them back in the supply. We take all the tiles here and we flip them back face down and then we add one more hippo. We mix up all the tiles, create the grid again, place out the little flowers again and we start all over. Once we have played four rounds like this, we go around the table to see who has the most flowers. And the one with the most flowers is the winner. If there should be a tie between two players, we play two more rounds. And the ones that are not a part of the tie, well, they just have to do something else meanwhile. So there you have it, people. That was Hamsters vs. Hippos for you. A really cute and funny little game. This is really like advanced memory for you. I mean, you count your points and you push your luck and you really do not know what's gonna happen. It says eight years on the box, but I played this with my little girl. She's four years old and she had no problem at all figuring out these rules. And she really, really loved the little artwork here on the tiles. I mean, all the little hamsters here jumping around, falling down in the water, stealing stuff from each other. She liked that one a lot. And the artwork just really, really appealed to her. And the push your luck kind of mechanism here really had her on her toes the whole way through and I had a, such a joy seeing her playing this game. It was just so beautiful. I can strongly recommend this game if you want to play with your kids, if you want to have a good time, but still have a little bit strategic thinking on it and get to know how far you should push your luck. This is a cool game. There will be links down in the description if you want to check this game out and see more about it. If you like this video, people, please give me a little thumbs up, maybe throw in a comment there for you. If you like the videos I make, if you like my channel, please hit the subscribe button. And if you're wondering why I have a giant Swedish flag in the back of me, it's because, for, well, I'm from Sweden and it's a thing between me and James Freeman. So until next time, people, please take care of each other, keep on spreading that board gaming love, and I see you next week.